Every year, more than 200,000 people visit Korea for medical tourism. In just 30 years, Korea has transformed from a beneficiary of medical charity programs into a leader in medical sharing projects recognized for diverse clinical experiences, advanced medical equipment, proven techniques, as well as quality medical care. Now, Korea's medical charity programs are going beyond all borders to demonstrate respect for human life. The Incheon International Airport in the throes of August heat waves. A group of visitors has arrived in Korea after traveling for 10 hours on a train and plane from Atrao in northern Kazakhstan. A girl in the group looks particularly tired. She's 15 year old Tabifa, who has come to Korea with her father to receive treatment for a heart defect she's had since she was little. A production crew from Kazakh TV station has joined them to shoot a special documentary. Their first stop is the Medical Tourism Support Center located in the arrival area. Opened in 2018, it is a Korean medical service hub that provides information to foreign patients and refers them to appropriate facilities through counseling. The center opened on December 18, 2018. We've had about 30,000 visitors as of June 2019. About 10% of them received information from us, and the most frequently asked questions were about physical examination, plastic surgery, and dermatology. The center is open all year round and staffed by healthcare providers and counselors proficient in foreign languages. Она, допустим, в школе физкультура не может ходить. Допустим, где мы живем, Каспийское море, допустим, все купаются, а ей нельзя просто так залезть в воду, если вода прохлада, ну нельзя. Ну, получается, ушемление идет до жизни, недостаток как бы. Она не может полноценно э, жить с той жизнью, которую она хотела бы, потому что вот эта болезнь ограничивает ее. Tabifa and her companions travel to the hospital by car. In a foreign land, the father and daughter put aside their worries and fears for the moment and start their journey to recovery. Four hours later, they arrive at Andong Hospital located in the city of Andong in Gyeongsangbuk-do province. Andong Hospital, equipped with an emergency medical helicopter and other high-tech equipment, is a regional medical hub that provides services for foreign patients, such as a pickup service from the International Airport and a spacious guest house inside a complex. Tabifa undergoes tests shortly after her arrival. Following a blood test and echocardiography, she unpacks at a guest house provided by the hospital exclusively for foreign patients. She brightens up at the medical staff's heartfelt welcome. But before long, the girl and her father grow anxious again. Only 15 years old, Tabifa suffers from a heart condition called mitral regurgitation. She
She undergoes rigorous tests before her operation so that the doctors can decide on her treatment options such as drug therapy or mitral implantation. Her mitral valve doesn't close properly, which is a symptom of mitral regurgitation. The blue here shows the blood flowing backward when it should go forward. It happens when the valve doesn't close tightly. Today, she's meeting with her cardiologist. Her symptoms started when she was only six years old. She would become breathless and exhausted upon just mild extrusion. Her parents suspected a heart disease, but their financial situation discouraged them from taking her to the hospital. This is a model of the heart. Normally, there are cores that connect the valve and the heart muscle. But in her case, the cord is severed at the front. The valve can be reshaped, but I'd rather not because it has a low self-recovery rate. I will have to take everything out and replace it with one of these two. She's only 16 and has to get married and have children. So I chose the heart valve replacement surgery. The date for her surgery has been set. Tabifa, dreaming of becoming a fashion designer, has never given up on her studies despite her condition. Not a day has gone by without her father praying for his brave daughter. Comforting the frightened girl, he tries to stay strong and confident. But even the father needs to muster his courage to face the scenario of an open-heart surgery. Because of the family's financial difficulties, Tabifa applied for the free public medical program in her home country, but had to wait endlessly for her turn. This surgery is essentially a fight for her survival. The heart will be stopped during the surgery, so the blood will be circulated outside the body. The blood from the veins is directed to a heart-lung machine where the blood is oxygenated and pumped back into the aorta. It's a high-risk operation associated with various complications, including lung or brain damage caused by cellular swelling or bleeding. The father paces outside the operating room after sending his daughter inside. As the clock ticks by slowly, his anxiety mounts. The estimated duration of the operation is six hours. Every process requires the surgical team's utmost attention from putting her under anesthesia to attaching the heart-lung machine. The surgery can proceed only after cracking open the breastbone to expose the heart. The team grows busy as they rigorously check the patient's fluctuating conditions lest they should miss even the slightest sign of a danger. The surgery went well. The valve was more deformed than it had appeared in pre-surgery tests. But there shouldn't be any problem with the replacement. 
She was young, so I had a hard time putting in a proper sized valve in her small heart, but it all went well. The father looks down helplessly on his daughter, attached to various medical devices, is wheeled to the intensive care unit. He tenses up as the girl remains still. His eyes dart anxiously despite being assured by the doctor that the surgery was successful. Dr. Lim visits Tabifa's room two days after the surgery. She covers her face in embarrassment, typical of a shy 15-year-old girl. She's now relaxed enough to thank the doctor and the nurses. The father and daughter have reason to smile now. They have never been happier to call it normal. The Andong Medical Foundation that oversees Andong Hospital also runs various medical and welfare projects. Over the past 10 years, medical services and income levels in Andong have improved dramatically and there are fewer underprivileged people here. Now that Korea is capable of providing excellent medical care, the foundation decided to help those living in countries with inadequate medical services. They venture outside a hospital for a short stroll. The warm sunshine and the green garden Everything in this world looks new and full of life. Tabifa's father doesn't forget to thank the Korean medical team who lent a helping hand when they needed it the most. For Tabifa, life is no longer about survival. The world is a stage where she can reach for her dreams. With people looking to live to 100, Korea's medical charity programs offer technical solutions to the question of how people may live long and stay healthy till the end. At the Incheon airport, a group of people has arrived from Uzbekistan desperate to regain their health. They can barely walk as they suffer from hip deformities. They head to Himchan Hospital in Bupyeong immediately. We have two male and five female patients from Uzbekistan. They mostly suffer from avascular necrosis of the fumeral head, degenerative arthritis, and hip dysplasia. 
They're all very serious cases that are rarely seen in Korea. Their hometown is Toshmashit in a remote part of Uzbekistan. They're participating in Korea's medical charity program that has ties with the Uzbek Health Department. They have their family support, but for them, life is about endurance. I'm <laughs> It was Pupyong Himchan Hospital that extended a helping hand. Specializing in joint and spine disorders, Himchan Hospital finds it even more meaningful to host these patients as the hospital is ready to open its branch in Bukhara, Uzbekistan. We invited these patients to mark the opening of the first Korean general hospital in Uzbekistan. They were selected by the president of Himchan Hospital this is a long-term project with an aim to treat 100 patients through the medical charity program over two years. The first phase of the project involves inviting them to Korea to give them free surgery and all-around rehabilitative care. Most of the patients have serious hip problems. They complain of pain even at the slightest of movements and can hardly walk without a walker. Since such serious cases of hip joint deformity are rarely seen in Korea and operations must be performed on several patients simultaneously, doctors from different departments have come together to study the cases and discuss operation methods. A vascular necrosis of the femoral head occurs when blood supply to the femoral bone is disrupted, leading to the death of bone tissue and non-functioning joints. Their day-to-day -day life is severely affected. They have to face physical and emotional challenges every day. Since their joints fail to function normally, Every movement, even sitting and walking, is restricted. It is also accompanied by excruciating pain. Their only wish is to be free from pain and be able to walk normally. All seven patients need joint replacements. Multiple medical teams get ready for the surgery. An incision is made to expose the hip joints. Then the afflicted part is removed to reveal the socket. The afflicted area in the socket is scraped off and a synthetic socket is affixed. We will insert a liner and cut off the diseased femoral head 
and replace it with a synthetic one. These days, we use ceramic femoral heads that erode less. It's a big operation that involves replacing the damaged joints with ceramic implants. But sometimes unexpected problems hinder the surgical process. The Korean doctors fail to receive accurate medical data as the patients didn't get appropriate checkups in their home countries. Sometimes even the blood type is stated incorrectly and it's never easy to find professional interpreters and caregivers. How are the patients doing after their hip replacement surgery? Their big smiles answer the question. I could tell by looking that the leg lengths differed greatly, almost 10 centimeters. The x-ray showed a difference of over 5 centimeters. The surgery made the leg lengths almost the same. The patient is very satisfied and can now walk normally. Sutures have been removed and the patients can walk without aid. Quality of life is just as important as survival. And health is determining factor. Everyone wants to be healthy. The surgery did more than just help them walk again. It changed their quality of life for the better. I don't think the treatment is impossible in Uzbekistan. They, too, have public medical institutions and capable doctors. But they don't have as many experienced doctors and advanced surgical tools as we do. Since the surgical instruments are not as advanced in Uzbekistan, surgeons couldn't have readily suggested surgery to these patients. Three days after the surgery, the patients, looking more at ease, have gathered at the rehabilitation room. Post-operation rehab is helping them move more easily than before. They use various devices such as slings and foam rollers to improve their joint function and crack their gait. Their ultimate goal is to be able to walk freely without pain. Hamas, Solings, Tilleman, 
Çok salama diyor, inep külü yüreği böyle çakamını bu işe gel. Yaş tuzalıp gitsem, bir çöğe kırıp işleyim aman. Oli yok, şimdi iyilik bir işe kırdım. Oyan Biondenger from Mongolia is seeing her doctor at Medrex Hospital in Gangnam, Seoul. She started feeling pain in her right knee 10 years ago, but couldn't afford to see a doctor right away. When her left knee started hurting, it became very hard for her to move. She was diagnosed with degenerative arthritis at a local hospital, but she relied on folk remedies and painkillers. She was invited to participate in Korea's medical charity program when she met the president of Medrex Hospital, who was in Mongolia for volunteer work. She is worried because she witnessed the adverse effects of artificial joint surgery performed in Mongolia's inadequate medical system. The various treatment options presented to her in her home country did improve her condition. Her worries subside a little after taking with the Korean doctor. She undergoes various tests such as lower extremity x-ray, magnetic resonance imaging, upper abdomen ultrasound, and a gait test. The gait test shows weight distribution and abnormalities. Medical DITI also helps doctors assess the pain level by visually displaying temperature changes. Her shoulders don't align. Her spine is crooked and her pelvic bones are misaligned. She also has severely deformed bow legs making her weight tilt to one side and causing pain when walking. Pain in the right leg is more severe for the 67-year-old Oyun. X-ray images show that the cartilage in her right knee has become so damaged that the bones are rubbing against each other. She has stage 4 arthritis. More seriously, her legs are curved very badly. Weight should be distributed equally on both sides, but once the bones start to bend, weight is skewed to one side. This accelerates rheumatism, so I decided to an artificial joint replacement surgery. We have to treat both sides because MRI has shown deteriorating cartilage. On the X-ray, it looks as if the cartilage is there, but MRI shows that the cartilage is worn down and the bone are exposed. The damaged area is 1.5 by 2 centimeters. Even if we treat the right side, she will feel pain in the left side in 3 to 6 months. We have to fix both knees and restore the damaged cartilage with stem cells. Finally, her operation day. Her right knee, which is so painful that she cannot walk properly, will be replaced with an artificial joint, the last option in degenerative arthritis treatment.
her damaged knee joint will be removed and replaced with a special artificial joint to help her knee function normally. On the other hand, stem cells will be injected into her left knee to regenerate the damaged cartilage. After 24 hours of intensive care following the surgery, she's able to walk with the help of a walker. She looks much happier. With her pain now under control, she starts physical therapy at the sports rehabilitation department. The program includes manual therapy to address the muscle loss issue and muscular abnormalities precipitated by impaired mobility. She also does rehab exercises to make sure that her knee fitted with an artificial joint will function normally. Dr. Yang has come to see her before she flies back to Mongolia the next day. Since physical therapy is critical in recovering from joint replacement surgery, Dr. Yang checks how much strength she had in her legs and teaches her how to practice bending her knees at home. She will be able to lead a normal life in about three months' time, but she has to be careful not to overexert herself during rehab. Her knees may become stiff if she doesn't keep up with her rehab routine, so Dr. Yang makes sure to tell her which exercises are good for joint flexibility and muscular strength. She shyly expresses her gratitude. Busan in southern Korea. This is Pagwonuk Hospital that specializes in spine and joints. A 17-year-old boy has arrived from Vladivostok, Russia. His name is Vladislav. From the front, it might not be easy to notice the problem with his back. His spine started growing abnormally when he was 12 years old. Before he knew it, he had a curved back, making it hard for him to hang out with his friends or go to school. Ever since he started having pains all over his body, he couldn't go about his daily routine. He has adolescent idiopathic kyphosis. The term idiopathic implies that there's no identifiable cause. In his case, the spine curves forward, pressing the heart and lung and causing organ malfunctions. It also causes muscular and ligament problems and pain. In 
a thorough checkup shows that his back is curved at 70 degrees. Given that an average person's spine curve measures 20 to 30 degrees, Vladislav suffers from a severe case of kyphosis. He undergoes a series of tests in internal medicine and surgical departments. Images taken with only a tenth of the radiation of a conventional X-ray show his spine curvature in 3D. He also does a gait test and musculoskeletal examination. I will measure how much the body is curved, how the shoulder and pelvic bones are misaligned. I will also see how the pressure is distributed on the soles of the feet. This machine measures the strength of the core area that supports the spine. A strong core will hold the spine steady, so a pre-surgery assessment of Vladislav's core strength is vital to designing his post-op rehabilitation and treatment plans. To treat kyphosis, doctors need to study many different clinical cases. It's important to plan out the surgery thoroughly since the doctors have to put bolts in the bones to strengthen the curved spine. In order to straighten the spine, a portion of the spine must be removed. The vertebrae are straightened out with the screws and connected with metal rods. Lastly, bones can be grafted to straighten the spine. Dr. Pagonok visits Vladislav before the surgery to put the boy's mind at ease. Both Vladislav and his mother are clearly nervous about the upcoming operation. <laughs> Being a single mother, Svetlana couldn't even conceive the idea of surgery for her son. She is grateful for this opportunity. The long six-hour operation begins. The surgery is called posterior correction and screw fixation with fusion. The patient is put under general anesthesia and the curved part of his spine is removed before bolts are fixated to the bone transplants. Dr. Park must be very careful not to damage the nerves. I'm going to remove at least five sections of the spine to straighten the spine. The nerves can be damaged during the process, but we use an ultrasound tool to remove the bones to reduce the risk of nerve injuries. You see here how the spine is curved. We'll use screws and bone grafts to straighten it out. It takes about three months for the bones to fuse together, so he will have to wear a brace for three months. Just two days after the surgery, Vladislav is seen walking around in a brace. Physical therapy is a must if the bones are to stay in proper alignment. 
he will have to wear a thoracolumbosacral brace for a while. But he's already walking the treadmill, albeit slowly. He'll be able to lead a normal life in three months. Эту операцию по такой акции, скажем так, да, по благотворительной акции. Вот что у нас есть такая возможность, потому что финансово для нас это ну, практически было бы неподъемно за свой счет сделать такую операцию, переезд. И, ну, у нас появились возможности быть полноценным, как, как, как он сам говорит, Влад, да, что ура, я буду полноценным человеком. Grateful for all the medical team has done for him, the boy takes small yet confident steps toward his future. In front of the burn emergency center at Hanlim University, Hangang Sacred Heart Hospital. Eight-year-old Cook Bao laboriously gets off a van. Just by looking at his face smiling at the camera and his eyes sparkling with curiosity, no one can fathom the pain this child has gone through. What happened to this happy child? <laughs> he arrives at his hospital room in a wheelchair. It's an old deal for him even to change into a hospital gown. Having third degree burns on 95% of his body, Kukbao cannot walk properly and has growth disorders due to post burn contractures. <laughs> Để đi chơi là mấy anh của bé cũng bằng trăng lưới. Có em nữa. Rồi, tên đi nghe cái sàn mừng heo của ta, nó nhảy. Có em nữa nha. Đúng ra, thì nó mất bé, mất hết da. Trong quá trình nó bé mất không da, bé tự tới tạo da luôn. Tại nó mổ gì, nhiễm trùng, nó mổ gì, nhiễm trùng. Nhiễm trùng nó thương, nó sâu quá, nó dính, nó sâu bầu sâu quá. Trong quá trình bé bị gì á, thì... He has undergone surgery and treatment in Vietnam, but his conditions haven't improved at all. His joints have become so deformed that he can hardly walk and has to live with an artificial anus on his stomach. The young child is enduring unimaginable pain. Cook Bao came to Korea as part of a medical charity program to undergo skin graft surgery. A Vietnamese doctor also joined him to observe the process. Tôi đến đây cùng với bệnh nhân của tôi vì bệnh nhân của tôi có sẹo co rút ở hai chi dưới sau bị bỏng khoảng 5 năm trước mà hiện tại thì đã được phẫu thuật nhiều lần tại Việt Nam nhưng mà kết quả thì không được như mong muốn và tôi đến đây cũng với mục đích là để học hỏi thêm những cái kinh nghiệm những cái kỹ thuật mới trong việc điều trị sẹo bỏng co rút đối với những bệnh nhân khó như bệnh nhân này. Hanlim University Medical Center Hangang Sacred Heart Hospital has a round-the-clock emergency treatment system. Equipped with an emergency burn center, it has steadily taken part in medical charity programs, contributing their expertise in acute burn care and reconstructive surgery. The jet lag cook bao finally falls asleep after a long, hard day in a strange country. 
His father, the family's sole breadwinner, has dropped everything and cared for his son ever since the accident. When the boy wakes up, the father cleans the scars and artificial anise. This is to prevent inflammation, which can have serious consequences. Dr. Lee jong is here to see the boy. His body is covered in severe burn scars. The doctor's expression shows how serious this case is. Neither bent nor straight, Cook Bao's legs have become permanently fixed in that state. His severely burned body has been subjected to various treatments for five to six years, leaving hardly any skin surface intact. It isn't even easy to find a normal patch of skin knitted for the skin graft. Dr. Lee is facing a serious challenge. Before he's wheeled into the operating room, the terrified Cook Bao burst into tears. The anxious father also wipes his eyes as he comforts his frightened son. It is hard for Cook Bao to stand up straight, let alone run, because his toes and ankles have fused together from the burn. Today's operation is the first step in the long journey that will make him stand on his two feet again. When operating on children with burns, doctors have to treat not only the burn scars, but also fix deformities to keep pace with their growth rate. It is an extremely complicated process. Once the contracture joints are straightened, skin must be harvested and transplanted to cover the relaxed joints. The surgical team cannot let their concentration waver even for a moment during the long six-hour operation. Will today's operation give hope to this child? Cook Bao is taken to the recovery room after the surgery. Barely away from anesthesia, he 
he bursts into tears, unable to bear the pain searing his body. The father does whatever he can to comfort his son. His eyes well up too because he knows the pain his young son has to endure. Cook Bao is moved back to his room. He's surprisingly calm for someone completely wrapped up in bandages. But it's too early to let the guard down. <sighs> Nonetheless, the father is relieved by Cook Bao's childish whining and call for attention. Both his feet and ankles were fused together, so he couldn't stand or walk at all. The backs of his knees were bent as well. Four joints, his ankles and knees, were restored to their normal positions. After releasing burn scar contractures, we performed skin grafting. Skin from other parts of the body is used, but in his case, the burns were too severe and has already had several operations, leaving hardly any place to take the skin. Both the father and the son look much happier. Cook Bao is recovering so fast that his surgery is celebrated as a success even among the medical staff. About one month is all the time Cook Bao has for his treatment in Korea. He's now well enough to chat with a nurse he befriended and enjoy the scenery outside a window. His father takes photos to remember this day. It's true that he still has many more procedures to go through, but maybe the operation has given him hope that one day, he too will be able to run and play with his friends. Well enough to explore the hospital in a wheelchair, Cook Bao visits the Burn Hospital School. As all kids do, he becomes excited at the sight of all the toys. The Burn Hospital School provides diverse programs for young burn patients so that they don't get bored during their long hospital stay. Today's activity is paper folding. Despite the language barrier, he follows the teacher's instruction and folds the paper. He is in a wheelchair now, but he is also learning to walk by himself. Today, at least he can make paper airplanes and wear a party hat and forget the painful treatment. Phẫu thuật xong thì con rất vui Vậy được uh, phẫu thuật xong về chơi với anh em bạn bè đi học Trước tiên cho gửi lời cảm ơn nhà Hảo Tâm 
như cùng bác sĩ và cùng các điều dưỡng ở bên Hàn Quốc trong thời gian bé Bảo ở điều trị ở Hàn Quốc phục vụ giúp đỡ cho bé tận tình Medical technologies exist to save lives and improve the quality of life. Korea's medical charity project serves as a beacon of hope for those struggling to get through another day. Doing more than just saving lives, this project awakens people to the value of life and sends a message of hope to the global community.